Well, so meanwhile, back at the ICC ranch, yes, Serena is chilling behind Fred, listening to him get grilled by a boardroom full of uh, women that he doesn't actually care about, and she's just sitting behind Fred as he endures an inquisition. Oh, we simultaneously did that. So Fred is looking at pics of women that he abused, allegedly according to him, but you probably definitely did this according to everybody else in the room. And he's a lying liar who lies. I'm telling you, when he, you know, they're asking him about the Jezebels, and he's like, I didn't really frequent that place very often. And I'm like, go fuck yourself, Fred. It was like your second home. We know it. Just stop. And he's giving information about a girl who died, because that's totally a thing that just happens. Uh, you know, this girl who died in an accident, in an accident, and the doctor who's not going to face any charges. Shit just happens. Whoops, he was extra sorry, though. And of course he wasn't prosecuted or charged with anything, because he's a man. Yeah, but what's so enraging to me as the viewer, because obviously June's not privy to this, but I feel like she is going to take away the same essence by the time she has that conversation with him, of he is trying to flip and quote unquote help is what I wrote in my notes of like Fred helps is how I titled the scene but he's not helping anyone he's it's all bullshit there's again it's that same thing with Serena there's no remorse there he's not even being honest like if he really wanted to flip and deserve his freedom he would at least give all the information he wouldn't still sugarcoat it and spin it as the Gilead spin master of that he loves to be it's so frustrating to me and then serena to double down on it is exactly what serena always does because she just wants the path of least resistance i feel like for serena if she can find a way to be like well god approves of this and it also helps me out in the process then everything is right with the world and that's exactly what she's doing as she You know, obviously Fred doesn't want to talk about the fact that he's been to Jezebel's in front of Serena, but she's not surprised by this. So he needs to cut the bullshit and she needs to cut the bullshit with, you know, the way she goes out and we'll get into it later. I don't want to jump too far ahead, but then she continues to spew at Tuello of all the like entitlements that Fred deserves and the fact that he needs to be called commander as, as a show of respect. Like what exactly was she asking? Like, it's just the, the fact that she thinks he deserves anything at all is ridiculous. I agree that it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, I'm going to talk about Fred's behavior first because, like, we see that in the first half of the scene. Fred's ind- indignant behavior, exactly like you said, he is electing to not help and he is choosing to be obstinate. Um, specifically because he doesn't actually want to defect. He doesn't actually want to. I uh, want to help out Canada. It is a purely self serve uh, self serving move, and that's why he uh, that's why he is coming across as so abrasive, and dodging these questions, and again trying to spin it and manipulate it, um, because at this point he's trying to do everything he can, to, knowing that he's going to be a free man, to try to save his own reputation. Um, this has nothing to do with like wanting to do the right thing, because Fred is incapable of that. So it stands. Yeah, it stands to reason that he would be, that he would be, you know, again, to be redundant, um, that he would be indignant dur- uh, during this interview process. And, like, and then when he sees Twello, like, just sort of looking over and refusing to answer the question for a moment because he's noticing another man and acknowledging another man as opposed to answering the, uh, you know, the black woman in front of him that's asking him questions. It's a very clear, very, it's a very, like, backhanded way of, undermining the uh, undermining the um, that um, prosecutor's questioning it's par for the course for him because he doesn't actually care about the canadian government he doesn't actually care about helping he's just doing what he can to help himself while continuing with uh, continuing with his same propaganda bullshit as per the usual i want to talk about what marjorie had mentioned too with serena making these demands of like he will be called commander she's making these like ridiculous demands and with some of them like the faster internet connection like he's already done that she doesn't need to make it in such a demanding way but when she finds out good is her response and again this indignant attitude she's making demands with no actual follow-through which is a false like and petty display of power at best she's making these like these displays because 
it's the only time that she can. Because if she and Fred are going to uh, live together as husband and wife, as Twello points out, she's never going to have an opportunity to do this. So her only chance to uh, make these uh, make these sort of uh, pleas of power is on behalf of her husband when he's not in the room. Otherwise, she goes right back to sitting uh, sitting behind him in the corner. Oh, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. In another life, I would have liked to have seen Serena excel as a human because I think she's brilliant. However, fuck you, Serena. Um, as they're going through their conversation and she's making her demands and she's like, my husband is giving you everything you want and Twello's agreeing. And it seems like all the demands that she makes of Twello, he is willing to, no, he's not willing, but he kind of has to acquiesce. And I really like how Serena completely glosses over the things Mark says about her and Fred's culpability. Like, it reminds me of, um, what was it, Home or the one after where she's talking to Twello and well, when June is talking to Twello and she's giving him the rundown on what to expect from Serena. And she says, you know, she's a narcissist and blah, 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 blah. This is something a narcissist will totally do. They do not acknowledge their wrongdoing. They turn themselves into a victim the moment you point it out. And that is exactly what Serena is doing here. And then she has the audacity to eye roll and be so derisive when she talks about June's second statement to get it out of her system. She's also foreshadowing because June doesn't get it out of her system until the end of the episode. Also, um... I'm sure Serena is biting her tongue as well with asking that, or demanding, the judge's ruling needs to be expedited. First off, Serena, who the fuck do you think you are to put time demands on an international uh, international court? Woman, you're daft. <laughs> but also, hmm, perhaps if you hadn't um, requested the judge's ruling uh, be expedited, perhaps uh, they would have actually ruled that your husband was worthy of leniency. But, you know. You pushed it. I know that her, what, I know her pushing it didn't have any actual correlation, but I can just see her sitting in her jail cell, milling over it, and without having any sort of information whatsoever, until presumably that ring and that finger drops. Then she's probably going to be, like be, get informed of everything. I guarantee you, at some point in her brain, there's the notion of like. The judge, uh, the judge expedited their uh, expedited their ruling, and that, and this is why this is all happening. Like some little shred of doubt somewhere in her mind, a little seedling. But ah, uh, making demands of people that she has no fucking right to make demands of is so, it's so Serena. Yeah, I feel like it's still like I definitely think it's Serena, but I feel like in the same way that Rita falls back to like a certain defense mechanism, this is Serena's defense mechanism. This is still just survival for her. Fred has opened up a new door in which she can walk through, but she still has to walk through it and be with Fred. I think she's hoping that things will be different. Like, I think later we see, like, that there's, like, I feel like she's hoping that Fred that she once loved, that Fred that she's claimed earlier in the season would never come back because he's tasted power and he just can't reel it in again. He'll never be that Fred that she knew that he was at one point. I feel like she's surprised in thinking that they might be able to start fresh like as much as I don't think Serena deserves to start fresh I think that's what she's seeing in this opportunity but at the same time it's still just survival she is still pregnant and vulnerable and Fred is the it's I said the path of least resistance but he's also her surest bet right in this moment like and I think that the fact that she's pregnant we know that Serena's like super fucking religious so like she she is taking this as a sign from god regardless of whether or not it is like this is how she sees this and if fred is truly the father and she truly believes that that's the situation and the fact that he just performed this quote-unquote a miracle that she calls it like in terms of securing a future for their family she's gonna like that she's gonna eat that shit up that is serena and fred and everything they've ever wanted to begin with and everything that they've done is because of this ideal that they've shared of let's create this beautiful family and raise it with all of our ideals and this is what they finally get to do and i feel like she's just trying to convince herself that everything's going to be okay she's fine with putting up a front regardless of how she feels it's not different than what june's doing no 
Of course, different circumstances. It's different circumstances, but once again, that like two sides of the same coin, it just hit me as we're co- having this conversation of like, wow, Serena has to tamp down all of her feelings and not express what she's feeling internally, outwardly. And it's exactly what she's doing. It doesn't make it easier. She's still seething in different ways, but I do think this is survival for Serena. And you can see it when, um, when Twello like questions her about like, you're going to live with your uh, live with him as husband and wife and may i ask why and like before she answers um she like looks away and she says as a family of course like it's absolutely doing what she needs to, what she feels she needs to do to survive i appreciated the fact that there was like that twello also like kind of evaluated her face and i felt like he dropped the script here as well for a little bit because his voice is different he calls her serena there's a softness to, uh, to his voice um and i know we haven't explicitly seen anything between them but it's very clear that there is at least some curiosity between the two of them there's at least some sort of weird mutual respect at the very least it's a mutual respect but i think after this I don't, well, actually, because she doesn't have to make that choice anymore. I think in this moment, he was kind of like, wow, you have disappointed the shit out of me if you're willing to go back and live with this bastard. Um, I think it's kind of funny how this is like yet another scene where there's so little said, but there's so many ways that you could interpret it if you really wanted to like think about it hard. And this is why people think that there is this chemistry. There is chemistry between uh, Twello and Serena, but you know the possibility that he's Serena's baby daddy or whatever. This is exactly what happens. It's all these little tiny moments where it seems like there's an undercurrent of something. And you want it to be more, but at this moment, it's just not more. I'd like it to be more because that would just be interesting as fuck. Why not? I mean, because I don't want Fred's progeny to be out there in the world. We don't need to perpetuate any of that. I mean, even we had hypothesized about that in our season four predictions with, like, yeah. Like, I was all team, like, yeah, absolutely. It could totally be Twellos, like, conjugal visits. Um, But because it's abundantly clear at this point that nothing nothing of that nature ha- had come to fruition, has come to fruition, and all that we have instead are these, like, longing glances between these two and like the notion of what could have been but now that fred's out of the picture i'm Mm -hmm. kidding (laughs) i know we said we weren't gonna do predictions however now that serena is just you know alive and stuff for season five so many things could happen I I will say one thing that we didn't get a lot of Serena this season. We got enough of Serena this season, enough to further the plot. But next season, since she's still sticking around, I am really, really hoping that we see more of that June and Serena head to head like we had in season two and season three, because I believe that one of the best parts of this show is their chemistry. So if, if we've got like, one more season of some sort of ambiguity where like you know it's still like that serena and june tango that they do i'll take it just so i could watch that i loved it they're so good the show done at the former lincoln memorial one of the best scenes in the whole season uh, series um but when serena's like um mentions um June being uh, being transferred, and then my family will be rid of you. And June retorts back, "You will never be rid of me until my family and my daughters are safe." Well, shit. Does this mean we're gonna continue this through? If you know, if they go into Testament's territory, because I'm down for it. Like, let's fucking go. Without Fred there for Serena to fall back on, um, it'll be really. Com- and now that June is not, uh, has all of her um, all of her protections stripped as well. Um, it's going to be very compelling to see where they go. But no more predictions. We'll do another, we'll do a whole other, like, podcast and a whole other video about predictions. 